Welcome to the 2024 Virginia Tech Spring Football Game. You are watching the ACC Network. Enthusiasm high. Big crowd on hand at Lane Stadium in Blacksburg for the Virginia Tech Spring Football Game. He's off anything kicking towards this end zone to our right, the south end zone, will have the wind at its back, whether it's kickoffs or field goals. And we will indeed have a touchback to start today's game. So 15 minutes, the first quarter today. Taking a step in that capacity and is much better. Look at that. Thomas going to throw it. Little tricky. Starting things off. And it's an incomplete pass. So he has no problem running it or throwing it. Here's Drones, dumping it off to Turner Bradshaw. This guy's got a lot of speed, and he's forced out of bounds on the 42-yard line. Receiver Bradshaw. A rollout throw for Drones, and he delivers it again, two for two to start the game, and that was Lovett that made the play. With his feet as well. Just shy of midfield, Thomas struggles, and a good defensive stop up front. It's going to set up a third down play. That was Brumfield again. That's his second tackle. But 2.15, Thomas goes. He gets it again. The line in front of him, and he had somewhat of a rough day. This year, good O-line, good protection, and a deep shot for Turner Bradshaw left side, and it's going to be intercepted in the end zone. And they're going to blow the play dead. Paul, one of the top corners in the league. Yeah, Drones had some pressure, slid out of the pocket, and then really threw a 50-50 ball. And Aiden Green just kind of mistimed his jump. And again, it's windy out there. You talked about it, Bill. Gets intercepted, but they'll bring it back here and give it to the offense again. They blew the play dead because of the wind. And on third down, this pass is incomplete. And now it is fourth down. He's caught a pass. He's thrown a pass on this possession. Quarterback run, no. They flip it nicely done, but Thomas can't hang on over there. And particularly those quarterbacks. Watson's first throw, nicely done to Jennings. And that'll be a first down on a gain of about 17 to Ollie Jennings. Thomas Williams made the play defensively. Jen Pop Watson. From the 38, they roll the pocket again for Pop, again to Jennings. Same guys, and Ali stepped out of bounds. In that wide receiver position. Watson's thrown the ball with confidence. That one's batted in the air, and it is intercepted. It was deflected and tipped. I think it was Burgos that got a hand on it initially. And Copeland... Came up with a carom. Tulane team in the Military Bowl in Annapolis, Maryland. And with Drones back at quarterback, high hopes for this team. And this is what Drones can do. Look at him run. Again, if he gets tagged just with a hand, he's officially down. From the 37. Oh, the orange team shows a little blitz, and they hand the football off, and that's another strong run. So we've seen an awful lot of some young guys, and P.J. Prelo is a gentleman that the hockey coach base because uh, he's elusive. They give him the ball again in a huge hole. There goes Prelo, and he'll score. The Prelo family and everyone from Radford, Virginia, as he gets into the end zone for the first time. And you see the great job on the offensive line. You're pulling backside. You got kick out blocks. Great job up front. You give it to Prelo. Good patience. Extra point for the Maroon team. And our first scoring of this year's Virginia Tech sport. Yeah. On this windy day, they'll have to hold the ball on this kickoff. And this will be another touchback. Bud had such an amazing career. As everyone who follows the Hokies or college football knows. One of Eating guys, outworking guys. And I tell you what, he's really done a great job. Oh, there you go. Another big run. Get that this is Coney. Defense back. Coney, <laughs> another young freshman. Well, he saw Prelo score. And Coney's out of Hermitage High School down in Richmond. Talent right now. And I watched a majority of the spring practices um, this year. And we just got a lot of competition. 
and no more than this quarterback spot. I really I tell you what, I, I like. Uh, That's Pop Watts, yeah, and that'll you, go down as a sack. Your foundation. I think it starts on, on that 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 spot of, of your of your football team, and uh, they've had a great off season. Um, uh, Deej has done a great job in the weight room with our guy. Bud, let me ask you this. In the portal, Gilliam and, and, and Peebles from Duke and Copeland come in. Experienced guys in the portal that have played at other really good programs. Like Peebles, he, you know, he, had a, uh, he was with uh, Derek Jones at Duke. So there was a relationship there. And we're still in a relationship-driven business. You know, yeah. and uh, and and more than ever now with the portal eyes that we've he we have not helped ourselves. I know we've helped ourselves in the middle a little bit with with Brumfield. I like what his what he's doing and how he's coming along and you know in a short period of time. But uh, I'm excited. I mean, I, and uh, like I said, that the experience is the best teacher. And uh, these guys have been in those positions and uh, had success and good programs. And uh, you know that's. Bud Foster, Hall of Fame, Virginia Tech defensive coordinator, joining us here. Nice punt. Going to go out of bounds or roll dead on the eight. Nice job. Uh, a big piece of it. Drones flips it off to Thomas, gets a nice block and has a huge hole. Look at the speed of Malachi Thomas. Still going. Inside the 30. And what a tremendous play. Little flick of the wrist. Thomas goes for 68 yards. Great play. The initial block was thrown by a newcomer at Virginia Tech and one of the biggest guys on the team. There's a quick flip over here to Prelo. That was Montavious. Prelo, excellent job. Good feet for his big size. Drones buying some time. Flips to the end zone and throws it away. Now that's good decision making, and that's one thing that he did so well last year. An interception, so good play. Maroon team needs to get to the 14 yard line. That snaps a bit high. What a tremendous shift by Prelo. It will be first and goal. Boy, he showed us some wiggle there, didn't he? <laughs> I'm telling you, he, he is very shifty in the open field. Just a little inside handoff. And just, you see that move right there. He put on the defender, Tyler Childress. And, uh, yeah, just uh, hard to bring down a running back like Prelo now that's one-on-one. What, one. That's what Bud was talking yeah. about. Daddy played defense. He didn't have a quick little shift yeah. like that. Drones to the end zone for the touchdown. Nicely done to Hairston. Kyron gets his first touchdown pass. Knowing, uh, you know, down and distance where you are in the field. And I love the play call in that, again, a little play action underneath to Prelo. And then you kind of a soft roll by Drones to the left. You, give, you know, you have a receiver underneath. You have a receiver in the corner. You give him two options and really three because he could run it as well. And, just a, and we'll see a lot of Dylan Whitkey today as well. Who is going to be the number two QB for Virginia Tech? Here's Coney again. He had that long run earlier, and he gets about nine on the first down play here. You know, and talking to Tyler Bowen. Brones and his team up 14-0 from the 30. Prelo, who's been one of the stars today, gets a good first down run of nearly eight yards, cutting it back to the left. Braylon Johnson from Highland Spring. Weep screen passes. Uh, that you can utilize in many ways. They're going to throw him the ball again. Nice catch. Prelo inside the 10. Does he score? You bet. Touchdown, Tech. 22 yards away. P.J. Prelo with his second touchdown. And this is where I think they'll utilize P.J. Prelo the most in this upcoming season, getting him into the flat, getting him in the pass game, because he is so hard to take down in the open field. I mean, you have Tootin and Thomas kind of, you know, your, your bell cows for between the tackles. Now, Prelo can run between the tackles, showing that, but he's dangerous on the outside. You get him in space in that passing game. Kyle Lowe adds the extra point, and it is Watson. Here's the kickoff coming. Let's see if Coney can do anything with this one. Oh, it's going to be muffed in the end zone. Going to run it out nonetheless. And the whistle will kill the play. 
Let's see what Watson and the Orange team could do now. Trailing 21-0 late in the first. They start on the ground. That is Traylon Mitchell today. Number two for Maroon. Watson looked left, rolls right. And that'll go down simply as a sack. And, you know, go back. They led the nation in sacks. Yeah. She wants that type of defensive front. They had that at Penn State uh, when he was up there. Mitchell on the screen gets the first down to the 38-yard line. Watson in the final minute of the opening quarter. And he does a nice job of throwing that away. Yeah, Watson has been harassed by that defense. See a ton of jerseys on it. They wear maroon. Defense does during the spring, and he said they've done it well. Watson takes a deep shot, and it's incomplete. That was Devin Alvis. That was the maroon team's up 21-0. Coming up in a minute, we'll be visiting with the Hokies head coach, Brent Pry. There's the fifth sack of this game. That's Jason Abbey. Freshman defensive lineman from Freeman High School, Richmond, Virginia. It gets the sack. Field as we wrap up the spring. Coach, what do you think so far? Yeah, I tell you, P.J. Prelude, surprise of the scrimmage. He's got a couple of touchdowns. Defense, man, he's getting after it. But let me tell you, both those guys had really good springs for us. Here's a deep shot. They're going to call that a sack. Whitkey tried yeah. to throw it deep. Both of them had really good sports. Or your bigger backs. You're exactly right. He can make people miss. He's durable. This is a young running back, Tyler Mason here, true freshman. Tyler's out of mount. Good throw to Thomas. Stays on his feet, and he's near the first down. You know, Malachi had a big run. I'll tell you who had a good Here you're going to punt, coach. Yeah, we're going to go for it, man. Spring game. Here you go. You guys playing. He got it. He does have the first down. Good run. Good run. It's shown up in his play. Um, you know, that's a very competitive and talented wide receiver room. And he has really shined. In April of 2023. And you can see it just what we've seen so far today. Whitkey in the air. Nice leaping grab by Green. Yeah, nice tackle by Brad yeah, Bill. Because you look great. You love what you lose 20, 30 pounds. You look awesome. Staying away from you're uh, staying away from those turkey legs from the like buffets. That. Yeah. Yeah. Here's Dylan Whitkey. Gets rid of it. No, he got tapped on the shoulder. The player this spring at that wide receiver position. Whitkey throws it short to Mason again. The ball's on the ground. They're going to rule it a catch and a fumble on the play and another turnover. That was Josh Golston that made the hit. To they got to secure the ball in traffic, but you know this orange team needed to make a play, and they're going to get one here. And it just you know kind of gets punched out. And as a as a runner with the ball, you just got to get it in there. It's been a while since the Hokies have had a key guy from Blacksburg High School. Here's Watson, and that'll go as a sack again. He got tapped on the shoulder by Abby. And the second quarter is just 12 minutes. In the second half, we'll have a running clock for two 12-minute quarters. Watson throws that one a bit high. That is Heath with the catch and a pickup of four. Talent there and a lot of instinct talent, as you said, Bill. Third and 15 for Watson. Flips it to the right. Good open field tackle. They got Coney down. Josh Clark, two plays. A ton of competition there to get on the field, and that's going to make that group all that much better. Heath on fourth down. He's going to make the catch, and the yards after catch gives them a big first down. And for 82 yards, trying to get the Orange team on the board late in the second quarter. Here is Coney. The freshman from Richmond got ahead for a couple of yards. I think the offensive line has played well on both sides today. But as far as spring games go, because they are so deep and talented, both offensive lines playing pretty well. From the 26, Coney slipped. He might have taken that a lot further, but he's right near the first in the first half. Let's see what Pop can do. To the air. And it's caught by Jennings. And he's got another first down. It'll be first down and goal to goal for the Orange. 
Big hit right up the gut. What a sensational play by James Jeanette. They're going to blow it up, and that's exactly what Jeanette did. Good job by Coney to hang on to the ball. Now Watson on the move, and he is ruled down on the one. That would have been a touchdown, of course. Yeah, I, mean, I think the officials could have given him the touchdown <laughs> there. And he gets hit. So you may ask, what's the difference between Pop Watson and Dylan Wickey that are both fighting for this backup job? Well, right there, Pop Watson's more elusive. He's more athletic. John Love adds the extra point, and the orange team gets on the board. It's 21 to for you, I know that, but how have they been rallying to the football today? Happy with that? I'm pretty I'm pretty happy right now. I mean, we're sitting in the at the back end of the second quarter. We got seven sacks if you combine both sides. We have three takeaways if you combine both sides. So man, I'm pretty pleased with that in two quarters. Well, coach at Vanderbilt, he played uh, under uh, Brent Pry in the 2011 Liberty Bowl, and now he's excelling as Virginia Tech's defensive coordinator. You got a guy in the middle at linebacker that reminds us. Um, I, I mean, we've been really impressed with him. You talk about a young man with the story and just being hungry and willing to do whatever it takes to feel. But we added some other additions defensively. They all fit in really uh, well with your unit. Yeah, so far, man, these guys have been working. I think everybody who's come in has been extremely. It has you most impressed. Uh, a lot more detail oriented, pre-snap recognition, communication, his physicality at the corner position, I mean, has been extremely noticeable. I mean, you see him coming up and setting the edge like a backer defensive into the lane. A lot of folks that are Hokie fans in Charlotte are familiar with uh, Quentin Reddish, who's from Independence. He seemed to be a guy that really stood out. What were your thoughts on play right now? I mean, really good player. All right, one more play, and we're going to wrap it up. Let's let's get some analysis on this play. They're going at the lane. No, oh, that's that's Josh Clark over there. Oh, that was Clark. Yep, yes, sir. long guy, right? That can play corner at six two. Yes, indeed, he can run. He comes from a great family too. His, uh, both of his older brothers played uh, played Division one football. Um, the, the one of uh, the defense coordinator. So, and his family, his mother played college basketball. His father did as well. So, you're talking about a young man who knows what it takes. To, uh, to work and be uh, phenomenal. And, and, you know, the guys that were freshmen that played a lot last year have clearly improved, and the, the mid-year enrollees and the freshmen like Reddish really look good for uh, Marv on the defensive side of things. Yeah, he's got to be happy. 34 seconds, two timeouts for the Orange team. Watson delivers. That'll be a pick. Number 77, 15-yard penalty, replay, third down. They call Brody Met, if you will, for Coach Pry to make sure he kept him on this staff. Watson throws that one away. It'll be fourth down with about 20 seconds to go. Also, though, that was an incomplete pass, and the Maroon team will take a 21-7 lead into halftime. Coming up, mic'd up. And bring back this much productivity and not, you know, be optimistic and good for next season. Again, the ACC needs to watch out because I really think this as well. Hermitage High School product. There were two or three days this year in spring ball that number 21 looked. Shown patience, good speed. It's a good running back room for sure. Jeremiah gets it again, and this time he runs into on third down here, no? Yeah, and get the tempo up a little bit as well. Here is Watson to the air. Oh, he had good protection until Jeanette got him again on the... We'll take a look at that again in a second. What a year it's going to be if you are a high... Going to Chicago, so we shall find out. We'll see. Here's Whitkey on the run under pressure. You know, the defensive front has done really well today. A lot of different guys on each side. And, and Josh Fugo, one of the leaders. I don't I don't believe he's playing today, is he? 
I haven't seen him. Yeah. So he's dressed. And APR. I mean, I mean look at Antoine Paul Rockland. Oh, uh, maybe the best, right? I mean, athletics. Nice to see you, man. Bill, it's great to see you as well, man. It's an honor to be up here with uh, two legends. Uh, <laughs> well, I, I appreciate that. it. Hey. Former alumni, former players, from the fans. Like it's all there. The expectation um, that we have um, for the team this year is something that we're looking forward. Back. Yeah, it, it really is special, and I think I know as I see my different role that I've had here uh, as director of student athlete support, but then also trying to connect the general guys who play the same position. Now you're very integral with with the players on and off the field, and a lot of people might not realize, but this is a team as a team 3.0 GPA, which I know you guys are. This offense can do here. Coney has a bit of a seam. Another good tackle. Andre played nine years in the NFL, and I think that's what's so special for him. He had a nine-year career in the NFL, so it's just a great blend that you're now back giving to your to your uh, alma mater, which I think is fantastic. Absolutely. Jump ball, and it's going to be incomplete. It's hard to do. This wind is whipping. I, I think me and Mike tried to make it as nonchalant as possible. He was always just the flick of the wrist, and he would go 70 yards, and my whole goal would be to try to make sure he would never outthrow me. You know, you were to become the player you did. Yeah, I don't think I don't think I knew I was a football player at that time. I think with many young players, you get into a new situation. I only played two years of high school ball, so a lot of other my teammates had in me. It got to the point where I was just like, I really believe we have a good team. And seeing how we were able to make each other better each and every day, it made me want to be. Even with all of the distractions that they have off the field, we're seeing guys who want to work and want to get better. And uh, ooh. That's a big hit. Nice you need an ice pack on that one. But if you guys continue to push each other, that's what's going to be. Continue to outdo each other, continue to uh, outwork each other, and the whole group is going to... Hokie's getting ready to play Clemson tonight. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's great to see, once again, the product that we're putting on the field and the way Coach Pry has really built up what the program is about. Hendricksburg, Virginia. Wearing number 19. And again, with that wind, that's a, that's a tough pass. He's a Hokie now. He's with his third college team, but clearly he bleeds orange and maroon. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, we've got a lot of guys who, who do really well, and I, I try to get the opportunities to speak with them when I can. Each team has a rally. Jackson Sigler is in the game at quarterback, and he's going to throw a deep one, and it is going to be roll to catch. Chance Fitzgerald hauls it in at its first and goal. Yeah, Fitzgerald's another one of those wide receivers that coaches are really high on. Excellent throw. Yeah, clearly in excellent concentration by Fitzgerald. And this is the this is the direction you want to go to throw those balls. The wind's behind you. Excellent pass. So the Orange team, you know, Reney, they were down 21-0. They're trying to make this a one-score game. And that is a touchdown. Here comes the orange team. That was Traylon Mitchell. And the PAT is good. Here's the play again again. Ben Locklear is the QB that set this up. And here's the short touchdown run by Mitchell. Good job by Mitchell. Just kind of patient in there. Let that offensive line set those. High expectation. Listen, I really believe the Hokies can be 4-0 going into that game at Miami, which is a fr will be a Friday night national uh, primetime game on ESPN. Um, I, I know the Hokie fans are excited just to make that Nashville trip the start. It's been a while since Tech has played in Nashville. Penalty marker on the play. That's just the second flag of the game. Jackson Sigler, the quarterback out of... Stafford, Virginia, number 15 in white. And he throws that behind his intended receiver. Hokies will play that Miami. West, Virginia Tech plays Stanford. Miami's going to play Cal. Well, when you add three new teams, you know, it was just two years ago that the ACC came out with a nice job with that schedule. It's not easy, right? You're adding teams from the West Coast, and but they've done an excellent job in, in scheduling it. That'll go as a sack as Sigler is tapped on the backside by Jordan McDonald, 640 to go, and a turning. 
Uh, it's good to see everybody get a chance to get out here in the stadium and play. Uh, we got over 100 lettermen here, good crowd on hand. So it's good to see what guys do uh, in the live fire when there's fans in the stands. We've had a good spring, very competitive. I'm pleased with the progress of our group, and it's good to kind of cap it off with a celebration with a lot of things. Good competitive springs I've been a part of, good give and take on both sides of the ball. I've had a good understanding of what's going on. we got a sudden change right now. That's All right, not so a I'm going to have play. to go. Yeah, we're Let's see if we score. Go. Uh, but no, cotton, continuity and competition. I'm pleased with where we're at and excited to get going in. Locklear, but nice pick by Clark. Clark had four tackles and an interception today. Uh-oh, that's not a good snap, and it's going to be killed as soon as Sigler picks it up. Getting back to what Tebow was talking about, Tyler Bowen. The and just the, the amount of experience that you bring back, and not just experience, but productivity, right? You're bringing back guys that put good numbers out last year so really something that all right is coaches are paranoid that's the one thing i've learned they don't want to put anything on tape uh, prior to the season sigler gets tapped on the backside, and that's going to unfortunately go as a, a sack again cookies will be in nashville tennessee against the vanderbilt commodores last time the hokies played over there it was way back in 1998 Greeny, and they played Alabama. The award winners for you, just to give you a sense of who has done what. That's a good throw and a catch. Is Locked Lear. Had Every player we talked to this week individually, and we asked them, hey, who stood out this spring? Everyone said Aiden Green. So looking forward uh, to make the kid work. Yeah, and you know what? And that pays dividends because everyone's seeing that. They're saying, man, he had such a good season last year. He's not resting on his laurels. He's working hard to be even better. That rises everybody else. Orange team has 49 seconds with a running clock. You can't call timeout or stop the clock. So if they're going to tie this thing, they got to go fast. They got time for maybe one more play. Wimbush, what do you think? 22 seconds. Can the orange team, they got to get it in the end zone here. And that might be the final play. They're going to have to really hurry with 12. Can they get it off in time? There's the snap. Locklear going to throw it to the end zone. And it's incomplete. Well, it came down to a dramatic finish nonetheless. And hey, good, good job by Locklear to understand what to do with no timeouts. And he throws, throws two touchdown passes for the Hokies. P.J. Prelo runs for one, catches another for Brent Prize team. A 21-7 Maroon victory for Brent Prize, Virginia Tech team. Our final score, the Maroon 21, the Orange 14. Farini and Golia, I'm Bill Roth. That's it for this year's Virginia Tech spring football game. And so long from Blacksburg.